some companies are such great operators that they deserve the benefit of the doubt, even if in the face of incredibly challenging circumstances. And that's the lesson of Kramer Fave RH. That's the high-end home furnishings chain formerly known as Restoration Hardware, which shot the lights out when it reported two days ago. Here's a stock that investors have somehow pretty much given up on because RH sources so much of its merchandise from China, and they seem resigned to being caught in the tariff crossfire. At least that's what people thought. But then this week, the company reported a fabulous beat and raised quarter. Even better, management took aggressive action to adapt to the tariffs. They're not just sitting there let it happen, striking some new deals with suppliers, selective raising some prices, and moving some of their sourcing outside of China. That including coming to the U.S. And that's why the stock exploded higher yesterday. I bet it's got much more room to run, especially with this most incredible buyback I have ever seen. So let's check in with Gary Freeman. He's the bankable chairman and CEO of RH. Find out more about the quarter where his company headed. Mr. Freeman, welcome back to Man Money. Great. Good to see you, Gary. Good to see you, Jim. Seen. How are you? Gary, nice i got to tell you. you um, what a tour de force conference call. I mean, you really just put to rest a lot of people's worries, as you said you would. Uh, and and you, bought, you have now bought back 60% of the stock to this period. I think you still think the stock's undervalued, don't you? Uh, we, we think it's massively undervalued. So, uh, yeah, uh, if, you, if you really look at our, our earnings and um, think about the multiple this, this company should have, uh, um, you know, I mean, today we, we believe the stock should be worth $200 a share, but... Uh, you know, I think people you know, continue to misunderstand us. Uh, uh, we're building stores that are unlike anything being built in retail today. Um, you know, we've taken on some debt. We kind of almost did a uh, vertically integrated private equity buyback right. of our company. Uh, and, um, you know, people are confused about the model because they think retail uh, is under attack. You know, right. by Amazon and others, and uh, and we're you know we're really playing in a different level and disrupting a different part of the market. Well, why just for instance the unbelievable store, uh, the the meatpacking district. Yeah. I mean, I got to tell you, it is a breathtaking experience, as you know, because I went there with my daughter, and you said at the beginning of the call that you are comfortably comfortably in excess of a hundred million dollars in one store. That's that's incredible. Um. Yeah, I mean, we think it's going to at least be $100 million in its first year. Uh, and if we get approval, and if anybody's watching that, uh, um, that's, that's our customers in New York that want to come help us at the next city council meeting uh, get approval to serve food outdoors on the roof, we think that the store will be in excess of $120 million. Now, you also talked about something that I was concerned about, and I said at the time, which was the China tariffs. It, 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 as good as China fa may be as a manufacturer, that you felt you, this time you had to take some action. Tell me about how that went, because you can't be at the mercy of anybody. Uh, no, you, you can't, but uh, you, you also can't be overreactive to kind of short-term noise, right? Okay. And you have to stay on your long-term narrative. And, and for us, it's, it's uh, you know, all about having the right goods manufactured at the right quality level uh, and uh, presented in the right way at the right value. Um, and being overly reactive and moving sourcing around in, in kind of product cate categories like ours can present massively more risk. But and you did bring some back to America. Oh, well, we, we've had. Uh, well, you've always had. Yeah, we, 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 we buy products in America. We manufacture some of our own products in America. We have, uh, you know, a manufacturing facility in North Carolina. Um, and, you know, we're, we're just always improvising and iterating and, and looking for opportunity. So, um, but, but look, it, it, the China tariff situation could be settled next week, and everybody could have spent a lot of time and energy and distraction. The fact is, the Chinese government and the Chinese factories, they're motivated for a good outcome. Right. Okay. The U.S. is motivated for a good outcome. I, you know, balancing trade is a good thing. I, you know, I don't, I don't mind some of this short-term chaos because I think the, the long-term outcome for the U.S. is going to be a good one. Okay. Now, in the conference call, you talked about how linked you were to the stock market. Uh, and it made me feel like, well, one, obviously things came roaring back because the stock market came back. It might be good to be more linked to around the world so you're less U.S. stock market oriented. And that could be in the cards, right? Oh, it, absolutely. For, for one, almost any business is, today is going to be linked to the stock market because of the massive amount of wealth that is tied in on multiple levels. So, uh, you know, w when you look at our, our fourth quarter and uh, we, we brought down guidance because there was a disruption, and the market fell 18% in December. Oh. Worst December in the history of the stock market. The market's come back to, to 20, you know, the Dow's back to 26,000. Uh, and people are surprised, well, like, your business is back. Well, 
Right. Uh, no, no kidding. So, the, there was that element in the call. There's a kind of like a naivete, sorry, yeah. about some of the people who about, trying to understand your business. I understand your business. I was like, hey, the market's back up. This is going to be great. Yeah, it's you know, it, I mean, that's it, you our, said our this stuff. Just, this is not new. Look, well, why do you think the, the president's tweeting about interest rates and the Fed and and so on and so forth? Uh, you know, <laughs> you know, a lot of times the, the Fed waits until a recession starts to right, lower interest right. rates. And if they, they move more quickly, the, I think the market's going to do better and we're going to do better. But, but really, the, the, you know, the global view for our business is, is just beginning. Uh, you know, if you, if you think about the luxury end of the market, like we, we've said, we, we comfortably think we can be four to five billion in North America. Uh, and that's just completing our real estate transformation uh, and, you know, our, our merchandising strategies right. today. Uh, if you look at the, the luxury end and, and think about the global marketplace, a lot of times they say inside our company, sometimes we, we're like dumb Americans. We, 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 we only see what we see. And it's like an Ayas Nin quote that we, we, we like to say is we don't see things as they are, we see things as we are. So we see the U.S. market. People with a global view see it very differently. LVMH, Kirin, you know, Hermes, Chanel, only 25% of their business is in the U.S. market. There's, there's Three quarters of it outside the U.S. market, so we think long term this could be a ten to twenty billion dollar company. But at the same time, you're still opening some new ones. You talk about a little delay in some of the new ones at Bethlehem. The way, uh, which one? Oh. Delay in some of the newer ones. You've got two more coming, right? That are oh yeah, yeah. In San Francisco at the Bethlehem historic Bethlehem Steel Building in, in San Francisco, the whole waterfront's being redeveloped. It'll become it's going to be it's going to be fantastic. Yeah, right? the meatpacking district of San Francisco, and we have a beautiful historic building that will be amazing with a rooftop and integrated hospitality. Um, and then we're, look, we're on our way. I'm going to finish filming here. I'm with my team, and we're flying over to Europe, and we're going to 10 different cities, and uh, we think we'll be global very soon. Okay, I, I often, I think, don't, this is not an insult, because listen to what I'm I'm going. used to insults. No, listen. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> there are a lot of very wealthy people that go to Costco. Mm -hmm. They do. You get the card, you get a membership. My wife swears by the fact as being a member of our age, she thinks the stuff is very inexpensive as a member. Yeah. So it's not like, I mean, you, sometimes you have the reputation of, of everything being too expensive, but if you're a member, it is clearly not the case, particularly for instance, the beach collection that my wife buys. Yeah, well, clearly, and I think your, your, your wife, uh, yeah, she ought to be on the show with us too here. Well, I said it sounds like I a real, you what real advocate. Bought. I did, I did, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, it's really, look, at the end of the day, it comes down to value, right? right? It's, it's not That's really about point. price, it's, right. it's about value. And you know, no different with, you know, if you look at what Tesla is doing and, and you, you look at the all-in value of the vehicles they're creating, the, the vehicles are more expensive, but when you look at the all-in value, they're really not. But there's no, there's no RH stuff in a landfill. Yeah. No, no, no. We, we, you know, we're building timeless product that right. we think will last generations. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad you, look, you know, I'm a big believer. <laughs> I, I knew that you'd fig figure it out. I was astonished that people didn't see the correlation between that December. It's just impossible yeah. for anyone in your shoes to be able to take, you know, just wipe out what happened to the market. Yeah. But the market came back. Well, and listen, in December, uh, it, it, our, our earnings were up 78 percent right. net income, right? And so, you know, 76 percent. And in the first quarter, 48% in the in the fourth quarter was 78% net income growth. It blew away the industry, and the right. stock went down 25%. Ridiculous. Reverse it, it goes up 25%. So you can't uh, get distracted by the short-term noise. You have to stay focused on your long-term narrative, Five and that's what we say. Dollars. Yeah, uh, well. Maybe 10 or 20 billion. Well, it's, you know, after this well, trip. We, we get to five, we're great. <laughs> All right, that's Gary Friedman. He's founder, chairman, and CEO of RH. I got to tell you, it was a magnificent quarter. And by the way, a fantastic conference call. They have money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.